Hello, and thank you for coming to the channel, okay? That is Deb Chanel's Sport Ace World, where we do reviews on the girls' cruise, okay? I must say, today, this episode, I didn't have nothing bad to say about nobody. I really didn't. It was a heartfelt episode. Uh... Only thing that I did have to criticize is that Maya just likes to be in control of everything. But after everything was said and done, I saw a softer side to Maya. And we'll get right on into it and I'll let you know what I'm talking about when it gets to that point of recognition. All right, but let's go on into it. The first scene we had was Ron, the fun director. He's out telling everybody to wake up and this, that, and the third. And we're getting ready to have... Today, a hosting of a talent show and, you know, all this stuff and, you know, just, I guess, to get something going because they still trying to get to Tobago. Okay. They still trying to get there on those seas. Okay. Uh, but anyway, um, Tiffany comes in to visit Kim in her little um, suite or whatever you call it when you're on a boat or a yacht, I should say, making a little small girl talk here and there. And I don't know what kind of tie Kim had on her hands, but she called herself making two swans, honey, and they were very pretty. I'm like, am I in Disneyland? Am I in Disney World? Or am I on a Disney cruise here? Okay? Because Kim had them swans sitting up perfectly. All right? I'm like, okay, Kim got too much time on her hands if she's going to sit there and construct a swan out of towels, okay? And Tiffany gave her uh, props on and said, girl, you in here doing your thing, huh? You must be bored. But they pretty. Yes, they are. They pretty, girl. You showing me more skills you got that I didn't know about. Okay, and then um, Kim was talking about how pretty V is and, and, and how she wanted to construct a talent show some time ago when they were, you know, floating on the water and stuff. She thought it would be a good idea. And Tiffany said, yeah, I remember her saying something about that. And that sounds like a great idea because, you know, we got cabin fever. In other words, we got boat fever. I'm tired of being on this boat and we just having little excursions here and there. I mean, the jet skiing on last episode was okay. And lounging around on this big ass yacht is getting very, very, um, uh, tiring, okay? We need to do something else to spark things up until we can get on some land again. So they said, okay, we're cool, we're cool. We're just going to do that talent show thing and, and see what happens, get some interest going on and getting us having and connecting again, okay? And then um, we have another table. B. Simone is talking to Chili. Uh, she seems that Chili is a wise woman beyond her years, and, and she just adores her. It's something in Chili's demeanor is uh, getting B. Simone attached to her. She just loves her. And I don't know if that's a misplaced love, but it seemed like Chili uh, came aboard with just having a son. But when she leaves, she's going to have an adopted daughter. Okay? Maybe her and her son can get it together. You know, yeah, that could be a great couple because Chili got any other girl that Tron try to bring home to her, she ain't gonna like her. She ain't gonna like her. And I think Tron and uh B Small, they might be in the same age group. I don't know. I'm not sure. But that'll be a good match in my eyes. A Chili coming home with a daughter that she didn't know she had. Okay. I mean no burping, no diaper change, just full grown and in charge. Okay. Call her mom. And it's and, and Chili's just taking it all in. And she really does. Damn, it seemed, to me, it seemed like she aged a little bit. I mean, she came in like a, a um, what do you call it, a, a nun and, and trying to be all sanctified. And seemed like that boat was aging her a little bit. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's the lighting. I don't know what. But anyway, she looking a little older than what she came in on. So we needed her to get to that fountain of youth or that nylon pool or whatever so she can reconstruct herself. But she's going to be gracefully uh, growing old and being seasoned. And she's still going to have her beauty because she still looks nice. And excuse me, y'all. Her body is to die for. So she's very, very well kept and preserved. It just seems like when I looked at her the first episode, like she was radiating and, and, and you know, looking all 
you know, stop and push. And then I'm seeing her, like, she's not age. I don't know if the boat doing the water doing or whatever, but she need to hurry up and get off that boat, okay? But anyway, uh, moving from there, uh, Chili uh, tells B. Simone, since they're getting acquainted with one another, uh, and she's not always over Maya's, uh, listening to Maya's foolishness or whatnot, she's connecting with uh, B. Simone. And she said, I just love the chemistry between you and Pretty V. It's almost like y'all were sisters. And I didn't know both of them were comedians, but, you know, I learned tonight. I learned something, guys. I learned something, honey. Because uh, I didn't really know who Pretty V, Pretty v was, nor B. Simone until uh, this girl's cruise. And I got a chance to, you know, live vicariously and do them and, and them telling me what they do as far as their um, careers and stuff of that nature. So I did, I did not know that they both were comedians, two different type structure comedians, but they still make you laugh. Pretty V make me laugh a little bit more than B. Simone. But B. Simone's just loud and, 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 and characterized. With, well, no, she's more structured. And uh, Pretty V is more characterized where she plays different people. And she acts them out accordingly. And, you know, she's just funny as hell to me. Uh, but they were talking about making, you sh making sure you keep a good friendship base and not let any jealousy come between you all because... It would not only uh, damage the friendship, it'll probably damage the business relationship uh, at its core as well. So, you know, she was dropping little cute knowledge on a younger person uh, in the entertainment field. And, you know, she was giving like motherly advice as well. And she even went on to say, go. Oh. She even went on to say that, you know, comparing. Her uh, friendship, meaning um, B. Simone and Pretty V's friendship with the friendship she had with TLC. And, you know, she's just making little inferences here and there, some similarities and things that you have to watch out for. But she was around two great people that really, you know, took her in, loved her, and she did the same for them. So it was all kosher. But, you know, she was saying, you know, her friends weren't really jealous of her and her accomplishments. She wasn't jealous of them. Da, 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 da. But we know the flip side. She uh, left out. She was trying to dog out all of them, saying she was better than both of them. <laughs> so they might not have no animosity on their part. But left out sure had some on hers for them. Okay. And it could have just been, you know, uh, the entertainment book did them too much, you know. And they start really feeling themselves. And, you know, it just went south for them. They were really going to break up more than anything else if left I would still been um, living today. They probably would have got back together, but uh, pretty much left I was kind of like, oh, excuse me, bullying them and, and, and trying to say what her worth was a part of being a part of. Uh, the group TLC, and she really was holding them down <laughs> versus uh, they holding her down. And she wanted a solo career, so she was kind of trying to get the big head here and there, which, you know, groups normally do. They don't stick to the formula that started them and how they uh, grew in the industry. Somebody's always whispering in their ear, you know, you could be better than this. You could be a solo at it. You know, they always do it. They just try to tear up groups and, you know, by the group members not being solid and knowing how they came in is how they want to go out. They let people get into their ear, letting them know that they can be successful solo and all that money can be a, just go for them. And they don't have to split it, you know, between the group members, whether you got three, five, ten, you know, whatever, just be you getting all the, you know, residuals. So that can play an ugly head in the, uh, ways of being a group and trying to make it in the industry if you don't have a firm foundation. I know y'all want to stay together as a group. So she was just giving her hints. That was that was cute. That was good motherly advice as well. 
Then somehow Pretty V gets on the intercom. She starts telling everybody it's time for the talent show. And this child done hooked up teams, okay? She done put Ma and Tiffany together. And I knew that was going to be a debacle or some kind of issue going on for the negative. But I was pleasantly surprised. Then we had B. Simone and uh, Charlotte were going to be working together. Then she said she's going to be no other. Pretty V is going to hook up with Lil' Cam and they're going to win that contest. And, of course, Chili is just going to have to sit down and be the judge. Okay? And I'm like, okay, okay. I like how she split them up and made Chili the judge. Uh, good cool beans for uh, Pretty V. Then, no, Pretty V is just so hyped about the talent show and Kim and not sure what the hell Pretty V is talking about, but she's cool. She's going to go with it. You know, it's like V was on some ooey, you know, kind of stuff. She's like, we're going to get this girl. We're going we're gonna to rock it like it's 1999. And, you know, Kim just letting her go and have her fun with it. Because Kim says she's going to get in where she can fit in. If it's just five seconds or something, cool. <laughs> then B. Simone, she goes in to talk to her partner, Charlie, trying to figure out what they're going to do. Then she started giving us as the viewers a resume of her talents and she goes on to tell us she's been a part of about three or four different groups and you know she was a I guess an R&B singer and then she started her little task where she wanted to go solo and she did that for a minute then she started uh, just breaking out I guess rhythm and blues type music and she started rapping I was like oh lord and then she went from rapping to being a comedian so I was like, God, dog, girl, you want to be in the industry, entertainment field industry, and the music industry. You sure went through the whole full circle, okay? You can sing. You can be in a group. You can be by yourself. You can rap. Then you can turn around and be a comedian make us laugh. Good God Almighty, girl. Show you. Do your thing, okay? You a one-trick pony. Well, you ain't no one-trick pony. Is you got multifaceted skills. But <laughs> that is basically how that went down. So, uh, then she was telling um, Charlie, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So, she pretty much getting on Charlie's nerves and making him all nervous and stuff. She had to take a break from him. And then she came back. She found him trying to play the piano. And he could play, y'all. Okay? He could play. But anyway, moving on from that, uh, Maya is, you know, talking. talking about she got to be rehearsing because she can't have, have this debacleness like she had back in um well they had stopped out first i think it's shoot was it i can't remember where they had stopped out some caribbean island but that's the time where the mics and the electricity went out and i guess maya didn't want to lip sync okay <laughs> well, she probably was lip syncing up there but it's another here nor there now she wanted to get a very good solid routine of working together with Tiffany and she wanted to make sure she could choreograph everything. She wanted she already saw how she wanted it in her head. She wanted to bring it out so everybody could see what she was talking about. She made Tiffany work, 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 like little worker bees around now. But Tiffany was all there. I mean she was built, built, built and built, what do we call it? Built and built for the situation. Okay. Ma said, we're going to vote, honey. We're going to vote. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. I'm like, yeah, has she been watching RuPaul uh, Drag Race or something? Because she had that. No, I like to see the men, the gay men, just, you know, doing their little vote, vote, vote. Well, really, hell, Madonna bought that out, or she got it from the gay side. I don't know what else. But I remember seeing a lot of voguing when Madonna was out back in the day. That was in the 80s, so she had that thing going. Okay? But anyway, they went to practice and practice and practice, and they got it perfect. Okay? Then we got um, everybody's, you know, done had their time to rehearse and it's time for things to get started. Okay, so Rome tell everybody on the microphone, he's the fun director, of course. If they ain't got it, they ain't going to get it. Come on, let's start the show. And he was going to be somewhat playing the music in the background, whoever needed it to do their little skit or whatnot. So uh, they were trying to figure out who's going to go first, this, that, and the third, and V said, I'm going to tell who's going to go first. And then everybody was like, no, you ain't going to be doing all that. And she said, uh -uh, I'm transitioning into being the host, okay? I'm going to be the host. I'm going to start it off, and then I'm going to tell who's going to go first. Well, of course, she made Maya and Tiffany go first. They had themselves covered up in like a little, what do you call it, house coat, terry, terry cloth type house uh, coat uh, sequence. And then they had on the little shower cap or the little cap that you go to sleep in so you don't mess up your hair. It looked like shower caps to me, though. 
So they went and took off all their outfit, and they were like shimmering and shining around there. Y'all, I don't know where they got their outfits from. The kid was trying to say when they had time to practice, <laughs> let alone get some outfits, okay? But they came out. They were bogging, bogging on the floor. like, damn, where the stripper pole at? You know what I'm saying? You're going to go up. You're going to go down. You're going to do splits. Whatever you're going to do. But that dog gone Tiffany. She would go running down there rolling, 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 like rolling on a river. But she was doing that thing. However, my head said she wanted to go. Um, Tiffany was hitting them steps. Okay? She was hitting them one, two, three. And my was pleased. Yes, she was. They did that thing, that bogan thing. They set their behinds down. Then we got B. Simone and Charlie up there. Charlie is messing up on the music. Um, B. Simone, she kind of, you know, being antsy to uh, anxiety, shaking up there and, and just losing her mind, her train of thought. So they pretty much start fussing each at each other and they just set each other down. They just set their butts down like, I can't do it. I, I, I'm just frustrated. So they just set out for the moment. But uh, Chili didn't really want them to give up like they tried to give up on each other, excuse me, and she like, just sit down and rest for a minute, just sit down and rest for a minute, okay, because y'all ain't got it together, you know, and, and, and what do you call it, Chili started giving them constructive criticism and this, that, and the third, and they were like, yeah, whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever, we ain't finna do nothing, but then, um, they wanted to take a break, and then and, 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 uh, Chili said, uh-uh, we ain't taking no break, they, no, honey, this show must go on, where y'all going, she just trying to tell them, nah, y'all need to come on back, but anyway, um, they didn't really take a break, um, Lil' Kim and Pretty V was out there trying to put on their costume, I don't know what the hell they came out looking like, Look, they came out looking like some Martians, I don't know what was going on, and Pretty V was talking to all this Haitian, Jamaican, Caribbean language. Look, Kim was just trying to rap a little bit. And she was like, it was funny to her because she was like, we ain't finna win nothing because these costumes are a mess. We a mess. We call ourselves practicing. We didn't practice. We do nothing. I'm laughing my behind off at your behind. And they were just a hot mess. They really were. So, um, Chili was saying, now nah, we gonna go back and get Charlie and, uh, um, um, uh, be Simone another chance because they just gave up and we ain't finna get we ain't no quitters around him we winners all of us even though it's gonna be one winner but all of us is winners so let's get Charlie them back up because she heard Charlie rapping to um be Simone on the sofa and she's like man that boy got some balls the way y'all couldn't do that from the beginning so she made them get back up there and they went on and turned it out like it wasn't nothing and then dropped that diamond he said we blazing like we chilling like diamonds or blowing. I forgot what it was. Well, no, he said we blowing up like ice or something. Whatever. And then, um, what's that? B. Simone had got the little jewelry uh, purse and she had like dropped jewelry on the floor. You know, it, it was artificial. It was fake, but it's still the whole thing, how they had put it together. It's like she had dropped the mic, but she had dropped the jewels on the floor. Like, uh, we done. <laughs> I know we won. <laughs> I'm like, nah, you got the. We call it the best comeback <laughs> of war, but you didn't win. Even though if they would have did what they did, I would have felt that they should have won in the place of Maya and um, uh, Tiffany. Even though their presentation was on point, they came and did that thing, killed it, the Vogue little scene, and that was it. But it was kind of boring. You know, anybody can just get up there and do all that. You know, they strutting and, and, and posing and stuff. So that really didn't, you know, get me off of anything or light me up to want to be like standing ovation for them. But I just like how uh, Charlie was grooving with uh, B. Simone and, you know, they was really feeling each other. But it's like too late, too little. Moving on. So Chili basically had told them she really uh, felt that Maya and Tiffany took everything serious. They did what they were supposed to do, follow all the instructions, and they delivered a nice presentation. So she let them win and stuff like that, which is okay, you know, whatever. Then Ron, he hits the music and Chilla said, you know, I got to do something. Y'all ain't going to have me up here looking like no screw up <laughs> or whatever. You know, no pun intended because she did end up playing the song or Ron put on the song, uh, no screws. And I think they were, she was lip syncing it at first, but then everybody started singing and she started singing. It was just like a real uh, family type 
uh, groove going on. You know, like you was in a family cookout. Everybody was joining in. Everybody saying, hell, I'll start throwing up my hands and shaking my little booty in my seat. Like, yeah, yeah, I like that. That was totally camaraderie right there. Then we left there. The next morning shows up. They're in Tobago. And Maya comes in to talk to La Kim about the talent show and how she really felt good. I said, nah, girl, you felt good because y'all won. And like I said, good work, hard work, perseverance pays off. So she's like, she had a breakthrough. She's trying to uh, work through her issues. She, she, recognized, she recognized that it was her, not Tiffany. And this that I thought, we'll see how long that lasts. But I was just glad that she pretty much had said you know, she uh, really liked Tiffany. She felt they bonded when they were working together, training for the competition and this, that, and the third. And I said, yes, Mike, because you look at life as a competition. Instead of you digressing, just, you know, enjoy the moment. Don't add to it. Don't take it away. Just be in the moment and enjoy it. Your life will be so, so much better. But moving off of that, we got Char. She, uh, he's recorded a video from the last episode where Dreads and B. Simone was uh, filling themselves and out there having a good time, you know, being free, one with nature and all that kind of stuff. And uh, she came over to, to see the video itself. She said, you little stalker, you you take all that from me. That is so sweet. And I tell you, if, if really Char, Charlie wasn't um, gay, they would make a pretty couple. Charlie and B. Simone, they would because they're so sensitive with each other's needs and wants and they desire, they listen to each other. And they, you know, they just had a bond from really day one since I started watching and reviewing this show. So that was my little spiel on them. Then we got um, B. Simone talks about wanting and needing a mother figure and how she got so drawn to Chili. And Charlie was saying, yeah, she's a decent person. We already done dubbed her as Mama Boss and this, that, and the third. And, you know, I thought, like, oh, my God, they, they really looking at Chili as an old woman for real. They don't put her out the pasture. But, okay, they honoring her. At least they call her her mother. Okay. But um, they finally get to this uh, pool that's supposed to have so many uh cleansing and rejuvenating type principles uh particles in the water that's supposed to like make you age uh or grow what do you call it age slowly or I, I don't know I think it's all um in the mind really I don't think anything is in any water you know I'm like I'm saying it's the Lord put it down and it's there for you and he's doing it. Um, but, you know, that's what they believe in. A nylon pool is supposed to cleanse you, supposed to make you be refreshed. You you be like age. looks like you don't found the fountain of youth. You never get old. This, that, and third. It's supposed to make the men wiser. Okay, that's the tale of the myth that's being told. But they all cleanse themselves with the water. Tiffany starts to, you know, release her in a bit inhibitions and let them know she comes from a poor neighborhood and right now she's working on herself she's feeling herself that she is enough for herself so she should be enough for everybody else and that's what she said and that's what she's gonna stay with okay deal with it that's what she's saying she put it on other people because she got her shit straight now she got her life straight she's good enough and if other people don't feel like she's good enough fuck them that's pretty much what she's saying because i am good enough okay so that's what she realized. Chilla said she got to stop being in control of everything. I'm like, whoo, thank you, Jesus. But it, it, mine needs to be in that same water pool of thinking as well. But we're going to let it go. Uh, but Chili acknowledged that of herself. She got to stop being so uptight. She got to stop worrying about everything going wrong and just let it be. You know, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. So I like that. Then you got Pretty V. She thought she let go of her, her past. She had been bullied so much in the in the past in her grown folk stage as well as being a child and she's just gonna let it go and maya she was up there saying uh she wants to stay close to people she want to love people i'm like that this sounds so familiar from the first admission you had okay so I, i'm not i'm not really set on my because my could just be like there for the, in the moment and then she go back being her uh controlling self so we're gonna let her we're gonna pray throw prayers up for her that she gets better with being around a group of people that she feels she can trust with honesty with releasing things that have gotten on her nerves from other people and it just stays in the circle and she can come and confide in them and they can confide in her 
So we, we, we hope that for Maya is true, you know, but like I said, I had to try her on each episode. Uh, then you got B. Simone. She's thanking um, Kim for bringing her on the trip because uh, she really felt she needed the energy that Chili was bringing to her. And she said she hopes she's not offending Chili in any way, but she really wants her to be her mom or she sees her as her mom you know it's just it's just really you know everybody was just crying by that time i was like oh lord that's why i said chili don't got her daughter honey daughter she didn't even know she had or what she got her okay so she going home with a grown-ass daughter <laughs> that she got to stay in contact with till the day she die okay then we got Charlie. Uh, Charlie, he's opening up to just being opened up, I guess. I I, I didn't understand where Charlie was going because he seemed like he got a good head on his shoulder. He just probably around people that were trying to feed off him, uh, eat off him instead of, you know, having people that give back to him in a sense. So, I like I said, I was kind of confused with what Charlie was expressing, but it is what it is. Then you got little Kim talking about, and I really felt, uh, Kim on this one. She said she was lonely, you know. Uh, Biggie had told her when to eat, how to eat, where to go, when to go. You know, it's like she was in a controlling relationship with him uh, or lack thereof because she was, well, she was first before Faith Evans, but Biggie showed that he wanted to marry Faith Evans and kick little Kim to the curb. So, I guess she had a lot to uh, think about of people betraying her and stuff. So, she basically was like, she just wants to be, you know, she wants to be herself. Uh, she knows she has to put on a persona when she's out in the public's eye and when she's around other celebrities and she's in that entertainment, um, what do you call it, uh, arena and she has to act and be a certain way because that's just the way it is in Hollywood or Hollywood or the music industry an entertainment period but when she's around people that she feels she can trust she just want to be herself and if that's a goofy all day or just you know lazy all day that's just her and she don't want nobody to judge her and it definitely should not be her friends her close ace boom coons so she basically was telling them she knows she picked the right people to come in on this girl's trip and do the darn thing with her she wants the relationship to stay solid if they have to take you know uh trips again with each other each year to try to catch up because you know she knows everybody's busy they're trying to make it and be solidified still in the entertainment industry and ain't nobody trying to come out of it because you know that's what they uh pretty much had set their careers to be yeah that is all of my girls trip interview no i say interview i'm you know i'm tired i'm ready to go to bed but my review for girls uh Cruise season one, episode five. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Remember to continue to support me uh, by liking my videos, sharing my videos, and definitely subscribing to my channel. But blessings to you all. I will see y'all next uh, review for the girls um, cruise episode six, still on season one. Okay, and that'll be next Monday. All right. Other than that, y'all will see me and catch me about a video. <laughs> tomorrow sometime don't know what it'll be just whatever come across my feed and just say oh i need to talk about that and that's how you'll get your video for tomorrow y'all but y'all be blessed y'all have a nice night and i'll talk to you soon good night